Hi everyone, it's Leela with Miss Kiss Creations. Welcome back to my channel. Today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how I created this wine tumbler. This is a watermelon themed tumbler and it is super cute. It's a fun peekaboo tumbler. And you can see it has a cute decal on the bottom. Like always, all of my materials will be listed in my description below, including some direct links and coupon codes. And you can tell my little friend is very excited to show y'all how I created this tutorial. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm starting with a 12 ounce wine glass. It is a stemless wine glass. And make sure it is a glass clear tumbler or wine glass. I am placing the glass inside of my football and then I'm measuring the bottom for that decal. The bottom measured a little over one inch, so just keep that in mind. And then I'm wiping this down with alcohol. I did not sand this since it is glass. I just wiped it down very well with my 91% alcohol. I then set that wine glass to the side and then I went into my Cricut Design Space to create my watermelon seeds. So all I did was I Googled raindrops on Google and then it took me to the silhouette raindrops and then I uploaded that into my Cricut Design Space and then I created four different sizes of my raindrops or my watermelon seeds. So you can see I created my one inch height, my 0.75, my 0.5 inch and then my 0.25. It does not matter about the width, I only changed my height. Then I went in and I created my decal. The font is Cutie Shark. I did get that from defont.com. And then I sized that to about one inch by one inch to fit on the bottom of that wine glass. Now, whenever you cut out your decal for the bottom, this is very important. Make sure you are mirroring your decal because we're placing this on the bottom of the, the wine glass and you're just going to have to mirror this. If you do not, then it's going to look upside down. And then my machine was ready to cut my decals. I did use black because you are going to see these seeds and watermelon seeds are black. I use black for the decal and for the seeds. And I also use 651 vinyl. You can also use 631 vinyl. So before I weed this uh, vinyl, what I do is I take my tools and I rub on it to make sure that all of those decals are stuck to the backing. And then I weed the excess vinyl from that backing. And then once my seeds were weeded, I went in and I weeded my text. I did choose a font so I can easily weed. So do keep that in mind. The smaller the decal or the text, the harder it's going to be to weed. So that's why I chose a bulkier and not like a, um, a fancy font. So I made sure the letters were separated so I can have a little bit easier time weeding this text. And once my decal and seeds were all weeded, it was time to apply that transfer tape on my decals and apply first that decal to the bottom of my tumbler and then the seeds. So you'll see that I am applying my transfer tape first, making sure that the decal is nice and snug on that transfer tape. And then I flipped over my wine glass once I removed it from my football. And then I added that decal on that wine glass. So you can see the reason why I had to mirror that decal is so when you look inside of that tumbler, it's going to read left to right and it's not going to be backwards, just like you would with heat transfer vinyl. And you can see how cute that turns out so far. This is just the beginning of the cuteness, so I'm excited to show y'all more. And now I'm going to apply my watermelon seeds all over my tumbler. I use that same piece of transfer tape that I used to apply the text on the bottom. You can use transfer tape multiple times for these small projects so you don't have to waste all of your transfer tape and all your materials. So I just placed one seed at a time. I did not overthink where I wanted my seeds. I will say that I noticed that I use more of my 0.75 seeds than any other. So if I could go back, then I would probably put more of the 0.75 or I would just cut out more than the one inch. I think the one inch for this size wine glass was a little bit bigger than what I anticipated, but that's why I made several sizes. So I can just kind of play around with it and see which seed looked better on the wine glass. Once 
once I was satisfied with my seeds placement, I was ready for the next step. So I'm using my Mod Podge brush that I purchased from Amazon and I'm applying Mod Podge all over my tumbler. This is so I can apply my glitter to my tumbler. I like to use the Mod Podge method. You can use your epoxy method, that is okay, but I decided to use my Mod Podge method. And then I applied Sugar Pie from Glitter Heart Co. all over my tumbler, making sure that I have every inch of that tumbler or wine glass completely covered, including the bottom. And once I was finished with applying my glitter, I did not let that Mod Podge dry. I went right with my parchment paper and I patted that glitter down. Do not roll your glitter on the parchment paper like so. It will smear and rub your glitter off. So take your hand, take your parchment paper and just blot and sections, making sure that that glitter is pressed down on the tumbler. This is going to make your epoxy in a lot easier down the road and you don't have to worry about sanding as much when you press down on your tumbler. And then once that Mod Podge, the first coat of Mod Podge was done, it took about 25 minutes to dry. I went in with my next coat of Mod Podge. You don't have to add two coats of glitter, but I decided I wanted to anyway. So I went in and I applied my Mod Podge all over my wine tumbler and then added that sugar pie once again for that final coat. And then I allowed that Mod Podge to dry for about 25 to 30 minutes on that wine tumbler until it was completely dry and ready for the next step. And again, blotting that parchment paper on that tumbler or wine glass, making sure that glitter sticks nice and tight on that tumbler, making sure that it is as flat as possible. I also took my finger and rubbed it around the rim of the tumbler, just removing any excess glitter or Mod Podge so I can have a nice clean rim. And then I went in with my Krylon Crystal Clear Acrylic Coating. I sprayed two generous coats of that around my tumbler, and then I let that dry for about 30 minutes before epoxying. Once that acrylic coating was dry, I went in with my epoxy. I am using a total of 20 milliliters of epoxy for this tumbler. That is 10 milliliters part A and 10 milliliters part B, totaling 20 milliliters of epoxy. I let my wine tumbler spin on the cup turner for about four hours. I then turned off my cup turner and then let my wine tumbler air dry or air cure for another 20 hours. My total drying time was 24 hours for this coat of epoxy. You wanna make sure that you have this tumbler dry for at least 24 hours before moving on to the next step. And you're probably thinking that 20 milliliters of epoxy is a lot of epoxy for this glass, but adding this much epoxy will only make the next steps a lot easier down the road. So that's why I'm adding 20 milliliters of epoxy for this 12 ounce glass to make sure you have that nice coat and a thick coat above that glitter. And you can see my tumbler has dried. It is so pretty underneath the epoxy. I'm now going in with an 80 grit sanding block and I'm sanding away any of the excess epoxy or glitter that's on the rim. And I'm also sanding my tumbler. This is why I added so much epoxy so I can use this lower grit sanding block on this glass. I wanna make sure that I'm sanding this very well and make sure this is smooth. And I don't wanna to have to worry about sanding away any glitter. So I added that much epoxy so I can sand very hard, but not too hard so I break the glass, but I sand enough just so I can make this surface very smooth before moving on to my next step. Once I sanded my tumbler or my wine glass, I then went in with my 91% alcohol and I wiped down any excess uh, oils I may have transferred or any of that dust from that sanding block that may have transferred to my glass. And once I had a clean surface, I sprayed my tumbler with some white spray paint. I wish I would have just painted it. I'm trying to get rid of my spray paint, so that's why I sprayed it with spray paint. And then I just went over that spray paint with some white pop of color paint, just because um, the spray paint just wasn't thick enough. So I just wanted a nice thick coat. I let that paint 
completely dry before moving on to my next step, which is adding colors to this tumbler. I highly recommend going in with white paint before you go in with your green paint, because even if you miss some spots on your glass, you can see the white through the green and you won't be able to see that pink glitter through the green. And once my wine glass was completely dry with the white paint, I took some paint brushes. And again, guys, this is my first time trying this. So I used a lot of different colors, but I ended up using spring green for the base. You'll see that I tried to use four or five different shades of green, but the apple barrel spring green was probably the best color that uh, I thought looked more like a watermelon in my opinion. So most of the color that I use on this wine glass was that spring green. So I painted that all over the tumbler making sure that it was completely covered and making sure that I got the bottom and then I let that green base dry completely before moving on to my next step so it took about 20 to 30 minutes for that green base to dry And once that green base was dried, I went in with my Christmas green from Apple Barrel and I used one of these brushes with like the messed up bristles. And then I just lightly painted on strokes onto my wine glass. And you can already see that watermelon effect or real watermelon uh, coming to life. So this is really, really fun. I enjoyed watching this tumbler transform into a watermelon. So I just brushed that very lightly. I didn't use a lot of paint and I started with a darker color first and then I went in with a lighter color which is lime sherbet from apple barrel and then I layered that on top of my Christmas green I didn't wait until the Christmas green was completely dried I just went right in over it just in case they did like mix a little bit it made it look more of like a natural watermelon rather than a lot of uh, paint strokes so once I was satisfied with that light green or the lime sherbet I went back over with a darker green and just layered those colors until I I was happy with it. So I just kept layering it, kept trying to look at it, not overdo it, don't overthink this part, but just making sure that it does look like a watermelon and it doesn't look like brush strokes. This took about 10 minutes to dry because I used such little amount of paint for this step. So once this part was finished, like I said, it took about five to 10 minutes uh, to dry and then I was ready for epoxy. I did not have to seal this tumbler before going into epoxy. I waited 15 minutes and I went right into my epoxy. I use a total of 10 milliliters of epoxy. That's five milliliters part A and five milliliters part B, totaling 10 milliliters of epoxy. I chose a smaller amount because I used a larger amount of epoxy on the first step. And for this tumbler, I did not use a decal or add a decal to it so this is going to be my last part or my last epoxy step i wanted to only draw attention to the inside of the wine glass and that decal on the bottom of the wine glass and i didn't want to take away from the overall watermelon effect so you can see that i finished epoxying i let my tumbler cure and then i'm removing that football from the my tumbler and now it's time to clean up the rim i'm taking an exacto knife and i'm just cleaning up the rim very lightly making sure that i do not bust that glass and i was satisfied with how easy it was to actually clean up the rim it wasn't as hard as what i thought and then i took my 91 percent alcohol just to get rid of any of that excess paint that may have been on the inside. And guys, this tumbler is completely finished, or I should say wine glass is completely finished. Please let me know what you thought about this tumbler and if you guys make anything similar. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more tumbler and craft videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time.
Thank you.